Hey everybody, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama, at least my copy, is published by Rio Grande Games. Designed by Paolo Mori. He's done tons of games we love. We have lots of them on our channel. Plays two to four players in 60 to 120 minutes. This game is also published by Watch Your Game, but my version is not that. I got to use one in Rio Grande. So lots of different people publish this, but this is what I have. And what you're doing in this is you're taking on the role of a, an explorer or Vasco da Gama. I'm not entirely sure because I didn't read the rule book flair because I don't care. And you are um, recruiting sailors, hiring boats sending boats out on expedition to score points, get extra bonuses, hiring some captains, recruiting favor of some of these uh, extra characters here to give you some special bonuses, actions, missionaries, control of a merchant boat, or just be first player. So that's a little bit of what you're doing and trying to score the most points while you're doing it. So that's enough talking about it. Let's go down to the table, check it out. All right, so here's a game of Vasco da Gama almost all the way set up for two players and i say almost because we have a few more pieces but let's talk about what we do have set up you're going to put the board out you're going to get the appropriate people tiles here this one will stay on the board in a two-player game and you'll put your extra well, we'll get to that and then this this one will stay on the board and you put the missionaries there in a two-player game one player will start out with the first player character one player will start out with the explorer character and this is the part we still need to set up then you're gonna put all these marker numbers on the board in the appropriate spaces. You're gonna flip the top one of these cards, you'll shuffle it and flip it, and you're gonna put the economy marker next to the big number there. Then you're going to shuffle the project tiles by type, so we have all the level ones here. You're gonna flip six of them, or put six of them here and one on the Sao Paulo space. You're gonna draw five meeples out of the bag for two of the districts, so each of these sections up here will have five meeples. Uh, you're going to put the round marker on round one. Each player will get four um, action discs plus an extra one up here in this character. One captain. The rest of the captains will go up there. And ten lira, I believe is what they are. And then uh, since this player is first player, they get to start with a point, uh, two points. And then this player gets to send out the first ship to sea because that's this character's ability. And when they send it out, they don't get any of the points that you cover up. Normally you would get the points but they're going to get the bonuses on the left, and I think they're going to put it here because they want to get a sailor, and they will take one of these gray ones. Uh, gray is easy. Let's take that one. All right. Now we're ready to go. Also, on this card, it's going to show you the available money options. Uh, nine here and four, so I can go to that space and get some money. Now, this is a worker placement game, and the way the way game works is on your turn, you're going to send out a worker, and you're gonna take one of these action numbers. Now, the reason these are important are because anything after to the right of this marker is free to use. So if I take the 16, I don't have to pay any money. The trick here is after all the action markers are taken, we're gonna flip one of these cards and it's gonna adjust the economy. It could go down, it could go up. So it's gonna make some of those that we thought were free maybe cost money. So it's a little bit of a push your luck thing there. It's not too painful. You might have to end up paying, you know, three, four, five coins. It can get expensive, but it's not the end of the world. And then you're going to send it out to one of the spaces. In a two-player game, we can use all the spaces that have the two little heads on, the, on them. And then you're going to go. And then when uh, you're going to, after everybody's done that, you're going to start from one, go up to 20. When the number comes up, you take the action. If you don't want to take the action, you can put the, the marker back, whatever row you put it in. So if I put the six back, I would get some coins and that's effectively how we go here all right so let's just i'll explain it more as we go let's just go ahead and um uh do it okay so this player is first i'm going to take an action marker and i am going to i really want to get a boat a project so let's go Go 10. I'm going to take the 10 and I'm going to come down here to get a project. All right. Then red player, they want to, they're just going to get some cash. So I think they're going to come here with the 11. 
and they're gonna go down here. So they have access to cash or people in this spot. This spot is projects. Then it comes back to me. I'm gonna go ahead and take the 13. I wanna get some people for my projects. Red is going to get some people as well. So they'll go here and take the 14. Again, there's probably more strategic options for grabbing numbers, but I just wanna show you how the game works. Uh, back to me, I will take the 12. No, I don't want the 12. Yeah, I'll take the 12. We can send the 12 over here. Back to red. They'll take the 15. They're going to get a boat. Back to me. I'm going to go out with a 16. Set a boat out, hopefully. And then they're going to set a boat out as well with 17. All right. So now that we've done that, now we have to see what the new economy is. So we flip this. This is going to get plus two. Boom, boom. So some of the ones that we thought were going to be free are now going to cost us some money. All right, so now I'll show you how that works when we pull them off. So the first one that we've used is 10. So we'll find number 10, which is me. Now, in order for me to use this, I have to pay the difference between 13 and 10, which is three coins, which I will do. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to use it. I could put it back and get two coins, but I'll pay it. And now, at this action space, I can pay one coin to take one of these, four coins to take two, or I can pay one coin times the number of crew members here to take this one. This one doesn't need crew, it doesn't need, a, uh, it just needs a captain. Normally when I take these ships, if you see it, look at it here, this one needs three different colored crew members in order to get it out in the boat, and I still need to get those. But with this one, you basically pay the crew and they come on the boat. I think what I wanna do, I'm going up there anyway. So, let's do, I'm just gonna take this six. For one coin all right so i take that six for one and now i have a project i need to get crew members before i can load it up uh, i have a captain ready to go just need to get three different color crew all right now we're going to 11 11 is red they'll have to pay two coins which they will because they're going to use that 11 to take nine coins here a big pile of cash which is pretty nice all right then we're going to 12 that's me, I have to pay a coin, because it's one less, ooh. Yeah, I can't do that, I need my money. So I'll go up here, and I get three coins from the bank. So you can forfeit the action and get the money based on what row your action marker's in. Then we're gonna go to 13, 13 is me. I'm gonna buy some crew. So, the way the crew works is it costs one coin for one of all that color in a section. So for one coin, I could buy all these grays. For two co three coins, I could buy two colors, six coins, three colors, 10 coins, four colors. So what I wanna do, I need three colors. So I'm gonna pay six coins, and I'm gonna buy all these, it's three colors, but I get five crewmen, which is pretty nice. Five sailors. They all have different jobs, but now I'm good to get this boat up. And you can also buy a captain for one times the number of crew members that you got. I have five, I don't have enough to buy a captain, so I had to forfeit that. Or you can go there and just get a captain, not buy any crew, but I need crew. So then I'm done with that. Now we're on to 14, which is the other player, and they are still have to go to Sao Paulo or the projects. They only need two crewmen, so that works. So they're gonna buy two colors, and that costs them $3. And they're also going to buy a captain, and that captain will cost them four, because they took four crew members. The number of cost of the captain is one times the number of crew members. Now they have two captains. All right, 14 comes back. Now we're moving on to 15. 15 is red down in the project area. They have so much money. They're just going to take a couple boats. They're going to take this one and this one. Those are both fours, but it costs them four bucks. They have a lot of bucks. Done. All right, then we're on a 16. 16 is me, so I get to send a boat out into the water. So what happens here is, in order to send a boat out, so I have a six point boat, I need three different color crewmen, so I'll do that. Three, crew, th three different color crewmen, I put them back in the bag. There's a bag of all the sailors. Then I flip this over, I assign it a captain, because we need to know it's my boat. And then I can put it on any of these ports of value six or less. And whatever number I cover up is how many points I'm gonna get. And I'm also gonna get the bonus. 
that's on the left. I need a captain, so I'm going to come here. And I'm going to put it right there. I get six points. And I get a captain. Because uh, I wanted to buy a captain, but I couldn't. So there we go. That was me sending a boat out. And you can assign as many boats to one port as you want if you had enough people to to do them all and enough captains, which I think is what the other player is going to do. We'll see if we can make it happen. Probably not because they're forced, but either way. So 17, uh, that was 16. 17 is next. They're going to put out a boat, and I think they're going to send out this one. No, it's the same thing. We'll send out this one because it only takes two colors. So two different crewmen. This one will come out. They're going to put it down here. It will get them four points. They'll put a captain on it. And they also get one free project, which is pretty nice. Let's grab a nice one. Let's take this bad boy. All right. And they can't put another one out because this one only has room for one. So, yeah, we're out of luck there. And then that is all the action numbers. And we're ready to do the end of the phase. So first thing we do here, we remove any projects that weren't taken. Done. They're out of the game. Then we're going to bring in the new ones. The one that's on top goes down here because we know that's coming. And then we'll refill up here. If you run out of ones, you move to twos. If you run out of twos, you move to threes. That kind of thing. All right. Then what we're going to do is we are going to... Um, Whoever has control of the merchant is going to take this boat and they're going to send it out. So this player still has it. It's a nine. They want to... Oh, wait, before we do that, sorry. Uh, so that was the end of the action. Before we do the cleanup, so we pretend I didn't do that, we're going to score points for our boats. Now, the boats will start exploring. That's phase three. The way that this works here is we're going to look at all of these landing ports here. And we're going to score. We're going to get any bonuses on our boat. So first, black gets a coin. Red gets two coins. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at ports that are closed, meaning completely full. If the ports are closed, the boats are going to move. Okay, so we start from top and we work our way down and then we go from left to right. So this one's not closed. This one's not closed. This one is closed. It's a four, so it's going to move up to either the same number or a less value value. So in this case, it has to move here. It's the only one available. And now this one is closed for next turn. But then this one's open to be able to put something down there. All right. So now whoever has the merchant gets to put one of these boats out and gets the bonus. And I think they want to put this. They're just going to put it there, take a coin. Then we flip another one. Okay, and then uh, now we're ready to clean up. So you do this, you send the boat out, and then we're going to um, slide this over, adjust the economy to five, because that's where it is. Get rid of these coins, put new coins down. So this one gets three, this one gets five. Take all the workers back. Whoever has the first player marker gets two more points, so that's black. Round marker gets advanced. Um, and that is it. Oh, nope, we got to refill the recruiting area. So we add three new sailors to each area. You only ever add three, even if it's all the way empty. So the more characters we buy, the less people that are available for us to buy. It's kind of a catch-22 there. And then we're ready to go. So now we're on to round two. We'll play another round. So let's do this. So I'm still first, black, and I need to, I'm gonna go try to get a character. So let's go here. I'm gonna go here, because I wanna show you the characters, all right? Then red, they have three colors. They have a boat, they wanna launch a boat. So let's do five, they're gonna launch a boat. And then it'll be back to me, I'll do seven. I need a boat, okay. Then we'll go here. Um, 
they have enough to launch in a boat. They're going to go over here and either get some money or use a character. We'll figure it out when we go there. So I'm launch. Uh, I'm getting the missionary. I'm getting a project. I need some work, some meeples. So we'll come up here. Red will also come up there. Uh, they don't need to go up there. They're going to come down here again. And then I am going to launch a ship. And red will... Mm, they'll go get another project. All right, so there we go. Now, we're going to flip the economy tile, see what happens. So it's going to move three. So one, two, three. So that stinks. All right. And now we're ready to take some action. So the first one is five. So we'll look and see who has five. That's red. If they want to take that action, it's going to cost them three lira, which they'll go ahead and do it. That's fine. And then they get to launch a ship. And they're going to launch this one. So it costs them three crew members. They have three different colors. They need three different colors. And they need a captain. They have a captain. And this can go out on a four. And they're going to go ahead and put it there. Actually, they'll go here because that'll give them a free captain. That's fine. They're going to lose the boat later, but that's okay. So they get a free captain and four points. Eight free captain. All right. Then we're going to go to six. Six is me. That'll cost me two bucks. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to take this tile. That gives me instantly a missionary. If I have this tile at the end of the round, I get another missionary. So you're trying to keep control of these characters. All right, then we're going on to seven. Seven is me again. Pay a coin, dang. Oof, now I gotta put that back. So I'll put the seven back, not take an action, and I'm going to take two coins. Then we're on to eight. Eight is a free one. So red is going to, they're gonna do this. They're gonna come here. They wanna be first player. So they're gonna go there. They're going to take first player from me and that will give them two points and first player at the start, at the end of the phase. All right. Um, then we are on to nine. Nine is me, I'm gonna buy some crew. I need two colors, so just three. So I'll, dang it, I don't, I'll take these two colors here. That cost me three coins. Okay, so now I have four colors because the missionary counts as its own color, which is nice. So in order to get a five color ship, you need to get a missionary. Then we're moving on to 10. 10 is red. And I think red is going to take five bucks. Then we're moving on to 11. That's me. I get to launch a ship. So, oh shoot. I didn't take a ship, so I can't do that. So I need to take three coins. Dang it. I didn't have enough money to buy a project, so that's what happens. So I gave up on launching a ship. And now 12 is out here and they're going to buy a project. They wanna get a big dog. They're gonna take this one. Ooh, that's two big ones. Yeah. We'll do this one. And that cost them one coin. They could buy two. No, that's fine, they'll just buy one. All right, and that's that. And now we'll move the boats. So. Anything, first the boats will pay out, so black gets a coin. Red gets three coins. And um, any port that's full, the boats will move, starting with the left to right. So this one will move and it comes up to here. And then this one is out of the game and the captain comes back to the red player, which is pretty nice. Now, we're moving on to round three, so we do that. We take our action disc back. Uh, we clear out projects, bring in new projects. So this is the Sao Paulo, because that's the one that we were been able to look at this whole time. This one slides over. The economy is now at four. We will um, oh, also whoever controlled this get to send the boat out. So they'll send it to an 11. Let's go 
they'll just throw it here. They'll throw it here and they'll take a worker. And then this will get flipped over. Um, we get three and four coins down here on the corner on the money sections. This player's first player, so they get two points. I get another missionary. And then we refill the sailors back up with three in each one. So we didn't buy any that time. So that helps us replenish, which is pretty nice. But we also didn't buy sailors. One, two, three. All right, and that is how the game is gonna keep going until the end of round five. And then whoever has the most points is the winner. There's a little bit of in-game points. Um, player with the first player gets two points. Uh, if you have this one, you get a missionary. You get one point for every $3 you have. And you get three points for each launch ship with a boarded captain. So there you go. And whoever has most points is the winner. So that's how you play Vasco da Gama. Let's go up to the top, see what you think about it. All right, well, that was Vasco da Gama. So let's talk about components and production a little bit. I'm not going to go into that a ton because this one has a lot of cubes and just meeples that are different colors. Uh, a lot of gray on the board. Um, this is probably the most interesting component these discs with the numbers on them. Uh, the numbers are peeling off on mine, so I need to figure out some way to like glue them down or tape them over or something. I don't love that, because that's like, one of the important components of the game. But outside of that, the board looks great. I like the art, I like the production overall, but it's just not anything super fancy, just effective. So let's talk about the gameplay. So this is a game that was made famous by Tommy V, on the dice tower where he threw it off the roof because he doesn't like good games apparently and while i agree with some of his points it is dry there's not a lot of theme here it's still a great game this is a game of trying to make the best that you can with the 20 or more actions that you're going to be getting on your turn you're guaranteed 20 because you have four workers over five act five rounds but you may get some more if you recruit one of the people you're trying to get sailors you're trying to get captains you're trying to earn favor of the other characters trying to put your boats out where you can get them to so they keep sailing up and scoring you more points and more points and more points and more stuff. So much stuff to think about and really not a lot of time to do it. And that's the kind of Euro game that I like. This is not, again, this is not one of the heaviest games from what your game, the line, well, whatever, you know, that line of games. But it's definitely one that gives you a lot to think about on your turn. It gives you a lot of possibilities. It gives you a lot of options and can be punishing if you do things out of order because that time, the actions, when you take them with a number on them, if I take one and I put it in the wrong spot, I'm basically just gonna be getting money and wasting an action, which is rough. So yeah, I like this game. Nothing about this game that I don't like. I love Paolo Mori designs and this game, it's fantastic. So I'm gonna give this a BGM accepted seal. This is gonna get a nine out of 10 on BGG, which is a 4.5 out of five wrenches on our arbitrary wrench scale. That means absolutely nothing, but we have to give it the games that we enjoy and that's what I'm gonna do. So that is Vasco da Gama from Rio Grande Games, or What's Your Game? And I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. And as always, keep gaming. Mm -hmm.